Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, the news has just come out that the um, only person definitively convicted of the murder of the British student Meredith Kircher in Italy in 2007, Rudy Gaudet, uh, he is um, going to be allowed out of prison to complete his sentence doing community service. And what this implies is that someone should probably be quite worried. And that someone is obviously his original co-accused, Amanda Knox and Raffaele Solicito. And the reason why I say they should be worried is now that Rudy Gaudet is going to be out of jail, he'll probably be doing some interviews. Certainly he'll be more available and accessible than he has been. And there's also been talk of him writing a book. And He's the only one of the trio, of the original trio, that hasn't written a book. Amanda Knox wrote Waiting to be Heard and Raffaele Solicito wrote Honor Bound. Um, both books received um, uh, publishing deals of something around $4 million and $1 million respectively. And so it would actually be crazy if Rudy Gaudet didn't write a book. I mean, he's served his sentence now, so... I don't know if there's anything preventing him from doing that. But there's also another reason why Amanda Knox would have good reason to be quite concerned about Rudy Gaudet coming out of prison. And he has in the past, I think around about 2014, made statements, quite assertive statements, saying, for example, that he was 101% sure that Amanda Knox was there, meaning at the crime scene when the crime happened. Now, why would he say something like that? In other words, why would he, he's convicted of a crime, why would he implicate someone else? I mean, he's getting what's coming to him. Why implicate somebody else? Something else that's also very interesting is he also implicates an Italian man. So in his story... He says, yes, he was there, and he also says that um, that there was another woman and another man there, and guess who was co-accused with him? Another woman and another man. So either he's wrong, or maybe there was another woman and another man there, and if it wasn't Amanda Knox or Rafael Celesto, who was it? <clears throat> now, I, I do think we've got to be careful uh, with Rudy Gaudet, um, there are statements that he makes that are not necessarily reliable, to put it mildly. And um, I'm going to just take you quickly through a um, Skype chat that, that he did very close to the time of the murder, around about, a, I think, about a month afterwards. I think he was in Germany. And you can go to the site, The Murder of Meredith Kircher, to read the entire transcript. I don't think he was aware that there was a transcript. But you can go there to, to get it. I will put a link in the description. And so this is the first um, reference that he makes to this this person that he encountered. And a guy called Giacomo, it's not the same Giacomo. Sorry, is it Giacomo? Giacomo? I don't know if it's the same Giacomo. Sorry, it's not. It's not the same Giacomo as the one that is living downstairs. It was another guy called Giacomo, who's a, a friend or an associate of Rudy Gaudet. That is the GB. And so he says, "I believe if you were there, but listen, this guy, you can't manage to say anything about what the hell he was like. That could be important." And so Rudy answers. Uh, it was almost dark. I, I didn't see his face, but he was Italian because we insulted each other. I insulted him and he insulted me, and he didn't he didn't have a foreign accent, and he wasn't any taller than me. I don't know how tall this Stefano ever is, but he certainly wasn't taller than me. Now, you might say, oh, so the guy's name was Stefano, but uh, maybe he just got uh, Raffaello or Solicito wrong. Especially the Solicito part, it starts with an S and ends with an O. And, you know, maybe Rudy just didn't quite remember it. Or perhaps it is somebody else. But it's just interesting what he says here. Then he describes him. Um, 
Giacomo asks, was he blonde? You know, did you manage to see anything? And he says, well, he was brown haired, um, more brown, um, right? And um, and so, what color is Rafaela Celesto's hair? So, what I'm trying to get at is, Rudy Gaudet, whether you believe him or not, isn't really very good news either for Amanda Knox or Rafaela Celesto, right? Um, he, it seems that he kind of implicates both of them, or he possibly implicates both of them. So now, um, now I want to just bring up something else from the Skype chat, just very briefly, and this is something that I've that I emphasize repeatedly uh, to those who know true crime rocket science, and there are some things that stand out in a lot of high-profile crimes um, that that are, are kind of strange and yet idiosyncratic and one of them is washing being done at, at, a, at a kind of unusual time and there are a couple of examples of that um, the John Bernay Ramsey case the Scott Peterson case um, just trying to think um, to some extent, the Chris Watts case, I mean, but although he was doing washing quite a lot anyway. Um, and and then, of course, the Amanda Knox case. And it comes up here where Rudy Gaudet says, uh, oh, sorry, another example is also the O.J. Simpson case. Anyway, uh, Rudy says, um, in reply, the guy was saying, um, you know, um, Sorry, this is Rudy reading from the newspaper. He says, Meredith's clothes were put in the washing machine. When the police... He's now reading this from a newspaper during the Skype chat. When the police came to the house, it was still full, meaning the washing machine. The girl's clothes were wet, meaning Meredith's clothes were wet. So if that really did happen, Amanda or Raffaele did it. And so obviously at this point now he's, he's saying the names uh, properly. He says, do you understand that must have been them if it really happened? So what he's talking about here is um, why were Meredith's clothes in the washing machine? And what he's trying to um, explain here is that when he left Meredith, she had her clothes on. And when she was found, she was found um, basically naked. Um, and what is interesting is there was blood on her um, sort of chest area, um, but not where there was, there was almost like an imprint where her bra was. In other words, uh, she was wearing her bra when she died, and then her bra was removed, and she was actually lying on top of her bra when they found her. And what that is kind of suggesting is that her body was um, staged. And let me explain it in a little bit more detail. Her body was not only staged, it was moved from the position where she died. It was moved slightly more towards her bed. And um, also her legs were sort of opened, right? And this is obvi obviously after her clothing was removed. And so what do you think the staging is meant to suggest? Was well, meant to suggest that someone had sex with her, that, that she was... It's kind of actually meant to suggest that someone was having sex with her. She was lying down, like, on her back, and someone was, I don't know, raping her, having sex with her, and then stabbed her kind of in the throat. Excuse the, the graphics there. And that is not what actually happened. Um, it's actually, based on the forensics, it appears that she was uh, kind of in a kneeling position with possibly with someone on either side of her um, uh, neck um, restraining her. And um, as far as I recall, she was stabbed by two different weapons, by two, two different people on two different sides of her throat, virtually simultaneously. Um, and that just doesn't correspond to this the setting, the staging of her lying on her back, the way that, that she was actually found. And what do you think that that implies as well? Like, who would, just in a very basic sense, who would 
um, kind of sexually attack a, a young woman? Well, isn't the answer a man? And so who would you exclude, not consciously maybe, but maybe unconsciously, who would you exclude from that sort of scenario where, where someone is explicitly, a, a woman is explicitly attacked in that way? Well, you would, you would sort of um, subconsciously, by inference, you would exclude a woman from something like that, wouldn't you? Um, there's more to say. There's actually quite a lot more to say about the circumstances there. You know, in a, in a similar insight in terms of the the staging, but um, that's not the point of this video. Um, what is interesting is Rudy Gaudet goes on to say, um, so Giac Giacomo asks him, why would they have done that? Like, why would they have put clothing in the washing machine? And it's a great question. Rudy answers. Because when I left, she was dressed, see? And uh, Giacomo answers, Meredith, the girl who died. And, and um, Rudy says, but Meredith was dressed. And uh, Giacomo says, so they killed her dressed. And Rudy answers, yes. Uh, but it says here that they were washed in the washing machine. Now, Rudy's not the best communicator, probably. Um, what... what the, the best way to answer this question, um, why would they have done that? Why would they have put the clothing in the washing? Well, isn't the answer quite obvious? Because of uh, possible DNA evidence, possible fiber evidence on her body. So you're now removing that and um, you know throwing it in the washing machine to get rid of uh, physical evidence like touch DNA, maybe fingernails, whatever. Um, so you want to get rid of that. Um, and the other side of it, of obviously, is, um, well, where were Meredith's clothes? You know, if, if you know, if it w the clothes that were found in the washing machine weren't the clothes that she was wearing at the time, um, or where were her clothes? And... Um, this is a bit fuzzy in the sort of discovery. You've got to sort of really hunt for, for this kind of information. But someone did say that when the police arrived, the washing machine light was sort of still on and, and it was still warm. In other words, a load had just been done. Now, that doesn't make any sense in terms of um, like Meredith couldn't have done the washing because she, she'd been dead for at least, 10 or 12 hours so that load of washing that had been done was 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 very recent and so who would have had the time to do that load of washing and that is kind of the point that Rudy Gade is making and it is quite a valid point it is quite a damaging point I would really like to see him uh, write a book about everything um, it has been rumored that he, he is going to we haven't really heard anything lately but uh, let's I guess time will tell so yeah just um, moving on from there uh, uh, there have been some of you have who've asked for merch and so you can also go into the description you can go and buy t-shirts and all sorts of apparel uh, even mugs and so on with some of the uh, true crime rocket science kind of branding on it uh, if you're interested and um, Something else to look forward to starting next week, Thursday, is a timeline review of the John Bonet Ramsey case. And as I say, there, there are also sort of interesting things there, like washing that was done, and sort of interesting things about clothing uh, that, that has sort of come up. And um, the very last book that I've written on John Bonet Ramsey has got to do with one particular item of clothing that is visible in the very last photo of John Bonet Ramsey. Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please do. Like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.